Niagara Falls, Ontario, famous around the world as a tourist destination, a magnet for 20 million visitors a year. But Niagara Falls is a real city, and it has plenty of real city crime. Fortunately, Niagara Falls also has a brilliant and determined crime fighter, a police dog named Bricks. He and his partner, Gord Nash, work for the Niagara Regional Police Force's canine unit. It's work that Bricks loves. If he could talk right now, he'd probably say, let's get out on patrol. He likes nothing more than to go out on patrol. That's, that's life for him. As a police team, Bricks and Gord are constantly together. Their boss, Staff Sergeant Bob Wright, is very happy about that. Gord and Bricks are an excellent team just because they share similar characteristics. Bricks has endless energy and endless desire. He continues and continues and continues to work. And Gord is the same kind of police officer. He is tenacious. Okay, it looks like the garage is clear. So what we'll do is we'll broadcast the vehicle, we'll check the area, see if anything turns up from there, okay? Working with the police service dog, you tend to dig more. You tend to go in those areas where there is a lot of danger, where there is a lot of break-ins and robberies, because you know you have a backup right here. And he didn't fail me, never has, never will. Bricks and Gord are not only together during the working day, they're together all the time. Want your ball? <laughs> now he's gonna walk backwards. He spends so much time with the dog. You know, tonight we go in, we work a 12-hour shift together. He comes home with me, um, I feed him. We go out for walks together. So you actually spend almost more time with your police service dog than you do with your own family. Uh, you spend so much time with them. Uh, my children spend time with them. My daughter really likes playing with them. You know, he goes out in the backyard and he rolls over on his back and she scratches his tummy and grooms him with the brush. A great police dog like Bricks is a highly trained professional, capable of knowing how to act whether he's on duty or off duty. You take him out on the street and he can tell when it's time to do his job and it's time to go to work. At home, he's a different dog. You put him in the police car and he puts on his game face and he's off to work. Hey you! Stop right there! You're under arrest! Stop right there! Let's stop! Bricks looks yeah. dangerous, and it works. His job is to chase down a suspect and hold him for Gord by looking fierce, not by biting. Should the suspect stop, throw his hands up the air, and remain completely motionless, the dog is trained to stand off. In other words, he'll come up, sit, guard, and bark yeah. at the person until I can catch up and make the arrest. Yeah. Bricks has a great effect on suspects. A lot of people are willing to fight with a police officer, but they do not want to fight with a police dog. As Gord's backup, Bricks is trained to be physically intimidating for the times when that's necessary. The training is for the safety of Gord or a citizen, and great care is taken to make sure Bricks isn't needlessly okay. aggressive. Turn to your right and start walking away from me. Do it now. <laughs> Bricks barks a lot, but rarely is he commanded to bite. That's why we train our dogs on what's called ball reward. He believes that throughout his training, he's gonna get the ball as a reward, not a bite. Sit. Sit. Bricks can sit there and bark and bark and bark at you. You give him his ball, and the first thing he does, is he leans up against you and wants you to scratch his side. It's a game to him. At the same time, his tail's wagging. As soon as the exercise is over, he's right up there and he's your best friend. It's not like he's aggressive to everybody or he wants to go up and bite everybody. It's not like that. Bricks's intelligence and acute senses can be the difference between life and death for Gord and his fellow officers. If I'm chasing somebody from a break and enter or a robbery, I don't know if that suspect's gonna give up. I don't know if he's gonna go around the corner and be waiting for me. Even in a building filled with smoke or tear gas, Bricks can still think and function. If it's needless to send the dog into a situation where he could be harmed, I won't do it. If it's a situation where an officer's life is at stake, then that's the dog's job. In all the confusion of a crime scene, Bricks is capable of finding a criminal and alerting Gord. 
his job is for our safety. Rick's jobs look after myself and look after the other officers on the street. You can see that's he's watching out for me. I didn't see this gentleman walking up the street. He saw him. The guy looked over here and Rick's lit up. That's what he's for. He's doing exactly what he's trained. But constant surveillance can take its toll, even on Bricks. When Bricks comes home from work, he's given his time alone. He doesn't need to have that extra stress of watching over me and uh, keeping his game face on as the police dog. I never do any training in my backyard. The most I'll do is throw the ball for him to fetch it and bring it back. But that's the extent of it. He doesn't do any other training at home. When he's at home, it's his time to relieve the stress and get away from the job, and he needs that. And I need it too. When Bricks is working, he's constantly called on to use his brain as well as his bark to know who's a threat and who isn't. The big thing to do is never allow mistakes to happen. Always be prepared for how you want the dog to react. A good example of it, I was on my way to do a public relations detail here in Welland. On the way to that, uh, a, a robbery had occurred in town. We went on the track to the robbery, and two members of the media happened to show up, obviously heard it on the scanners. The member of the media that was there has a very awe-inspiring picture of the dog just prior to um, the apprehension of this criminal. And you look at that picture with bricks uh, at the end of the line barking and growling at the suspect that's on the ground, uh, it really puts a picture in your mind of a police dog and how they can be, uh, as fearless as they can be. Less than an hour after that incident, I went to the school. I was with a bunch of grade students, uh, approximately seven, eight, nine, ten years of age, all around us, really tight. Before I even had a chance to react, uh, a young girl with Down syndrome that was in the crowd came out of the crowd and moved right forward and threw her arms around bricks. Uh, another member of the media was there and took a picture of it. Uh, that made the newspaper a large 8x10 picture of this girl giving Bricks a hug. Bricks knew there was no threat there, and he allowed this girl to wrap her arms around his neck, give him a big hug and a kiss. And basically, it showed two faces of a police service dog. Both pictures made it in the newspaper, into the same paper, two different cameramen. Sometimes, Bricks has used his intelligence in ways that no amount of training can account for. One time, it saved Gord's life. Bricks has come to uh, my aid numerous times. Uh, one in particular was a couple of years ago. Uh, there was a, a lady who had her car stolen, and heading into that area, the stolen vehicle that was just broadcasted on the police radio passed me. With Bricks in the back seat, Gord turned and started a high-speed chase that ended a few miles later at a deserted farm. When the suspect fled, it was Bricks's speed that brought him down. I quickly tried to move in. I called the dog off and went into a position where I was going to handcuff the suspect and take him yeah. under arrest. Gord had told Bricks to stay put. Now don't move, or you're going to get bit again. Do not move. What Gord didn't know was that the suspect had both pepper spray and a large knife. At that point, when Bricks saw the altercation taking place, he immediately, without command, moved back in and took control of the individual. Bricks had saved Gord's life. Constable Nash released his police service dog ordering the dog to chase and apprehend the fleeing driver. Gord received an award for his actions that day, but in his heart, he knew who else should have been there. If it wasn't for Bricks, it never would have happened. And it's quite obvious that way. He's the one who really deserves the award, not me. Working with Bricks is uh, such a thrill and enjoyment to do on a daily basis. I hope he's around for a lot of years. There's always that chance that he could get hurt. My first police service dog was only on the road for less than a year before he was injured and unable to continue his career. But I've been blessed with to have a, another dog such as Bricks that has such uh, good qualities. He's a very hard working dog. There aren't many dogs who can do what Bricks does every day, protect the life of his partner, 
help keep his community safe.